TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Tensions remain high following a weekend of extensive hostilities. Separate terror attacks plague Tel Aviv and the Jordan Valley, claiming the lives of three Israelis and one Italian tourist. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu pledges to restore deterrence that will alleviate heightened tensions in and around Israel. Tensions remain high in and around Israel following a remarkably violent weekend that included hostilities vis-à-vis -vis Lebanon, Gaza, Syria and the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley. Following the indiscriminate rocket fire launched from Lebanon toward Israel's northern communities alongside heightened tensions surrounding Jerusalem's Temple Mount, the Israeli Security Cabinet held an emergency meeting during which Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu highlighted that while Israel remains committed to the status quo on the Temple Mount and proactively aspires to restore calm to the ancient compound, it will respond with force against anyone utilizing violence. Moreover, Jerusalem will face any of its enemies errantly believing that a vigorous internal debate over reform aimed at reinstating balance to the country's three branches of government would grant them an opening to target the Jewish state. הבהרתי בימים האחרונים שאויבינו לא יטו בנו. הוויכוח הפנימי בישראל לא ימנע מאיתנו לפעול נגדם בכל מקום ובכל עת שידרש. כולנו, בלי יוצא מן הכלל, מאוחדים בזה. אין לנו שום עניין לשנות את הסטטוס קוו בהר הבית. אנחנו קוראים להרגעת הרוחות ואנחנו נפעל בתקיפות נגד קיצונים שנוקטים שם אלימות. באשר לתוקפנות עלינו מהזירות השונות, אנחנו נקה באויבינו והם ישלמו מחיר על כל מעשה תוקפנות. אויבינו יגלו שוב שברגעי מבחן אזרחי ישראל עומדים מאוחדים ומלוכדים ומגבים את הפעולות של צה"ל ושל שאר זרועות הביטחון כדי להגן על מדינתנו ואזרחינו. Well, the Security Council was still in session at approximately 10 minutes after midnight on Friday, IDF fighter jets began targeting Hamas installations in the Gaza Strip in a bombardment that lasted until the early hours of the morning, during which 10 separate prime targets were destroyed, including two subterranean passageways and two weapon manufacturing sites, among others. In tandem, Palestinian terror groups, including the Islamist Hamas and the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad, launched dozens of SA-16 shoulder-propelled surface-to-air missiles toward the operating Israeli aircraft, while in parallel, over 40 rockets were indiscriminately launched toward Israel's southern communities, forcing residents of Ashkelon, Sderot, and the Gaza periphery communities to spend much of that night in bomb shelters. It is important to know that over half of the incoming rockets were successfully intercepted by Israel's aerial defense array, while the remainder exploded in uninhabited areas. And while thankfully no injuries were reported, one residential structure sustained relatively minor damage after debris of an intercepted projectile fell on its roof. Meanwhile, after the Israeli security cabinet concluded at 24 minutes after 1 a.m., a series of decisions were made upon the recommendations of the IDF and security establishment in response to the firing at the Israeli citizens in both the north and the south of the country. Subsequently, at 5 minutes after 4 a.m., while the Israeli fighter jets were heavily engaged in the Gaza Strip, Air Force aircraft launched a simultaneous attack against Hamas installations in the Palestinian Rashidiya refugee camp south of Tyre in southern Lebanon. According to IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the IDF struck three Hamas installations in southern Lebanon from the area from which rocket fire was launched toward Israeli territory a day earlier. Admiral Hagari further stressed that the escalation was explicitly vis-à-vis -vis the Palestinian Islamist Hamas organization, which was identified as bearing full responsibility for the rocket fire that emanated from both Lebanon and the Gaza Strip.
It is important to know that 12 senior IDF officials in conversations with TV7 have classified the operational efforts by the Islamist Hamas to target Israel from both Gaza and Lebanon a clear operational failure approximately 50 minutes before 11 a.m. on Friday morning. A Palestinian terror cell blocked a civilian Israeli vehicle at Hamra Junction in the Jordan Valley and opened fire from short range toward a Jewish mother and her two daughters before fleeing the scene westward. As noted by the Jordan Valley Regional Council head, the two daughters, Mayan Rina D, age 20 and 15, sustained fatal wounds and were proclaimed dead at the scene, while the mother, Lia D, sustained critical wounds and was consequently airlifted to hospital for life-saving treatment. Regrettably, after fighting for her life for over 72 hours, Leah D, a dual Israeli-British citizen, succumbed to her wounds on Monday morning, less than 12 hours after her 15 and 20-year-old girls were buried. They were survived by the father, Rabbi Leo D, and three siblings. The journey to redemption it's a slow one, three steps forward and two steps back. And my Irina, with your loss, our world has taken two steps back. <laughs> Meanwhile in Gaza, the Islamist Hamas organization praised a murderous terror attack, dubbing it a heroic operation. العملية البطولية التي جاءت اليوم في الأغوار تؤكد على وحدة شعبنا الفلسطيني وعلى وحدة المقاومة الفلسطينية في مواجهة هذه الحكومة اليمينية الفاشية المتطرفة. Meanwhile, at 35 minutes after 9 p.m. on Friday evening, an Israeli resident of the Arab city of Kafil Qasim accelerated his vehicle and veered off the motorway onto a popular Tel Aviv beachfront promenade, ramming into a group of pedestrians before losing control of the car. As a result, one Italian tourist was killed and another seven other tourists sustained separate degrees of injuries. I responded to a, a call of a terror attack by car here in the boardwalk in Tel Aviv uh, and Her Herbert Samuel. Uh, we later, later realized we have eight injured uh, and, and varying levels of severity. Uh, one of them sadly passed away on scene. Uh, four, three of them have been moderately injured and four have been lightly injured, all evacuated to the nearest medical centers here in Tel Aviv. It is important to know that a police officer alongside local council inspectors who arrived at the scene seconds after the incident neutralized the assailant when he allegedly reached for an object which appeared to resemble a gun. Meanwhile, at 14 minutes after 10 p.m. on Saturday evening, a rocket alert was activated in the Home Front Command's mobile app in an open area adjacent to the northern Israeli community of Meitzal. The IDF spokesperson's unit subsequently confirmed that three rockets were fired from Syria toward Israel's northern communities. Nevertheless, only one projectile exploded in an uninhabited area within Israeli territory, while another struck an open area in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, and a third exploded in Syrian territory. Thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. Nonetheless, subsequently, at 42 minutes after 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, rocket alert sirens sounded in the northern Israeli communities of Natul and Avneitan, forcing its residents into bomb shelters. The IDF spokesperson's unit shortly thereafter confirmed that three rockets were once again launched from Syria two of which landed in an uninhabited area, while the third projectile, which had a trajectory toward a populated region, was successfully intercepted by Israel's aerial defense array. It is important to know that the Al-Quds Brigades, which is a known Palestinian militia that operates in Syria, claimed responsibility for the two subsequent barrages of rockets, which were fired from Syrian territory into northern Israel. Meanwhile, in a two-wave retaliatory response, an IDF unmanned aerial strike vehicle 
initially targeted the area from which the rockets were launched toward Israeli territory. Well, shortly thereafter, IDF fighter jets struck additional targets in Syrian territory, including a military compound of the 4th Division of the Syrian Armed Forces, military radar systems, and artillery posts used by the Syrian Armed Forces. Meanwhile, last night, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a press conference during which he proclaimed that under his leadership, Jerusalem will act to restore deterrence vis-à-vis -vis Israel's enemies. הממשלה בראשותי תשיב את השקט והביטחון למדינה שלנו. אנחנו נשקם את ההרתעה, אנחנו נסתכן את הנזקים שירשנו, זה ייקח זמן, אבל זה יקרה. It is interesting to know that while the IDF did not cite any strikes against Iranian infrastructure in either Syria or Lebanon, in a recount of Israel's retaliatory strikes over the weekend, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu noted that additional activities, including strikes against Iranian targets, were performed. Netanyahu further highlighted that in a single day, Israel had also dropped 50 tons of explosives on Hamas infrastructure in the Gaza Strip, and conducted wide-scale counter-terror operations against terror elements throughout Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley. All of these activities were committed as part of Israel's unrelenting efforts to ensure security for Israel's citizens, while sending a clear message to its adversaries about the consequences of any future attacks. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. As ever, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Chag Pesach Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.